Regional Public Service Commission staff member. Please press zero. <clears throat> Public Service Commission, this is John. Hey, John. My name is John as well. How you doing today? Doing fine. All right, well, I'm always better. Um, I'm hoping the same for you. And I'm calling just to express my concern with something that I just found out. Are you the right person to talk to, John? What's the concern? Uh, it's regarding the August 9th deadline for to request a hearing for the expansion on the pipeline. Quota access pipeline. Yeah, you know, we, we do have a request for hearing that's been docketed, and uh, I'm assuming that they'll be um, putting the hearing date uh, together on tomorrow's commission meeting. Oh, uh, the commission meeting is tomorrow? Yes, for not not for Dakota Access, but they, um, we have a request for hearing, and I'm, I'm assuming that they'll be... They'll grant it? They'll be setting the date for that hearing tomorrow. But we also have until August 9th to request the hearing. Right, but it's, it's already been requested by another party, so that Okay, well, uh, um, have you gotten a lot, John? Well, uh, we have. We've had quite a few, uh, but I don't know if it was an email uh, marketing or something, but, yeah, we've gotten a lot of emails. For, but, but prior to all that happening, we did get a request from the, from the tribal people, and that's in the docket. So. Okay, great. So my phone call, uh, it's, is it pretty much worthless, or am I being recorded? Right. or? Okay, well, I, I appreciate what you're doing up there in trying to maintain dil your due diligence and also just an always better attitude, hopefully, um, yeah. with regard to the situation. I, qu I questioned it a couple years ago, and I, I question it now, and I'm just like, you know, it, within two years, you need to expand it. I mean, how many more pipelines are they going to put in? It's just like there was a state-of-the-art technology dig that they did two years ago, and now they need more, more. More and it, it's just it's like when when is enough enough? So obviously they've got a lot of bills to pay and jobs to consider. But when the jobs somewhere down the line commit genocide, it's not exactly a good job. If it hurts people, it's not good. So I, I you know that's that's my standpoint, and um, I appreciate you if you can pass that on. I, specifically, how many more do they need? Okay, well I appreciate your input, and uh, I guess stay tuned for the hearing date. Cool. Great, John. I like to ask people, you know, where are you from originally, and, and or, or are you always from North Dakota? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, where are you from? Here, North Dakota. Uh, is that Bismarck? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I got up there. You had a, a very easy airport, that's for sure. Yeah, it's a pretty quaint. <laughs> yeah, it was very simple to get in and out, great car rental service. Uh, but I can't tell you that I enjoyed my time up there. But, uh, you know, it's always better. And it's just, you know, I, I just saw too many horrible things when I was there. Yeah, it's a great place to vacation if you ever get a inkling to For, relaxation. And, okay, which months should I come? Uh, well, uh, from, um, really from uh, April on through uh, October, those are the sweet months. Those are the ones we get really just beautiful, beautiful weather, uh, a very moderate climate. Uh, temperatures are, you know, the 70s and upper 60s. You know, sometimes we get into the 80s, but not very often. When I when I got up there, it was February. Oh yeah, not not a good time to visit North Dakota. <laughs> John, John, it was sev it was 70 degrees. It was 70 degrees in February, and this was right when um, uh, they had to clear out Standing Rock. So it was, it was kind of um, a, a weird blessing because they were able to remove a lot of the stuff that wasn't frozen in the ground because it was so warm and muddy. It was, it was pretty incredible. Yeah, I do remember that, yeah. It was weird weather. So you mentioned a good thing, and, and I like to inform people, anyone that I talk to, besides just the always better phrase, um, but there is one piece of legislative works
that is an option for us regarding the climate. And I hope you write the name down. Uh, the gentleman's name who's uh, initiating it is Jim Lee. And if you search for him on YouTube, you want to put Jim Lee Climate. Otherwise, you'll, if you just put Jim Lee, you'll get this really kick-ass animator. But Jim Lee Climate has been investigating like what's been going on with our atmosphere for the last seven years. And what he came up with was the 1978 Environmental Modification Act. And it was signed by Jimmy Carter. It's uh, about, quote unquote, weather warfare and what they can do to our skies. And it goes back to Operation Popeye in Vietnam and stuff 20 years prior to that. But Jim has, well, I think close to thousands, but hundreds of documents on his website, Climate Viewer 3D, that document bio and geo weather engineering back to 1880, including the Great Dust Bowl and then everything else that leads up to it. So, but what he's done, and this is the important part that's, that we have going for us, he basically makes the um, bill from 1978 verifiable and accountable and also de declares that we want, as a people, transparency for what they're actually doing. Uh, this past June, the um, I believe it was the Weather Modification Committee met, and that video is on YouTube. It, it confirmed everything that people know and that there's cloud seeding going on and that they are trying to do solar radiation management in the skies, which basically turn um, our atmosphere more white, but they want to turn it into a controllable thermostat. And that's just madness in, in many ways. I mean, just think of the Titanic, if you remember that, and if you're a religious person. The, the motto of the Titanic was, even God can't sink us. And what happened on the maiden voyage? Well, goodbye. It's just like, you can't really do these types of things is my point. And um, also the main point is that be on the lookout for NMOD, E-N-M-O-D-A-A. -A. And, uh, and please support it and let people know about it because it's, it's a really good bill and um, it brings down the shroud of a lot of things that have been going on. Interesting. So, oh, okay. So if, if you need me to repeat anything, I, I totally will. I know I value your time, but I appreciate you just giving a listen in. His name is Jim Lee Climate, and it's NMOD, E-N-M-O-D-A-A. Absolutely. Jim, ha Jim is a major leader of our time right now. He's done the work. He's not paid for it. He has his own like day job, and he's done this all on his own time. So that's interesting in terms of the word job. Like Sometimes jobs constrict you, but Jim's not constricted, and he's fighting for us, and he's trying to make things better because he had health issues, and um, he wanted to figure out what the hell's going on and why does he have them. Okay. Please pass it on. Uh, and before you go, I'm just going to say always better. Hopefully you'll say always better to me. Always better. Right on, John. Much love, brother. Take care. You too. Much love. Thank you. Okay, bye. I uh, heard that there was going to be an eviction uh, on, uh, on Wednesday. So I, I'm here to hopefully witness uh, a safe and peaceful uh, transition rather than a violent one. But the way that uh, things have been stacking up against the water protectors, I, I, it probably will be more violent than it will be peaceful. So it's, it's, a, it's a bad situation, but we're, we'll be here on, on Wednesday in, in, in a peaceful prayer and hope that uh, things could, might, and will go peacefully. But as I said from the past history of the negotiating with the DAPL people, it will be violent. That's their only language that they understand. We've been um, here for about seven months now and out on the front lines and living in the camp and the um, response from the North Dakota Sheriff's Department has been increasingly escalating in a violent militarized way. There's been over 700 water protectors arrested to date. Um, Charges keep changing from the time they're arrested to the time they appear in court to the time uh, of now. Um, they're, they're increasingly um, adding charges and, and felonies. Um, 
They're treating native peoples arrests much differently than non-native peoples, than our friends and allies who stand here with us in support of Miniwachoni, in support of the sacred waters, and in support of stopping the fossil foolish industry from <laughs> contaminating more of our waterways. Um, but this is treaty land, and we're standing here to, to protect that treaty land, not just for our people, but for all people. And, um, and this is a violation of our treaty rights. This is a violation of, uh, of uh, Mother Earth. And I think that uh, what's happened here and what's gonna happen and what's coming up is just another, another time, another step in the, in, the, in, the, in the movement to protect Mother Earth and all our relations and protect the indigenous people's human rights. So this is going on all over the world though. You know, there's more than 365 million indigenous peoples all over the world and more than 80% of those resources are on indigenous lands and territories in seven different regions. Indigenous peoples are on the front lines and this front line is important. This front line here at Standing Rock, here on treaty land, here nestled in the Cannonball and Missouri River here is important and it's our time to stop the madness. and move into a time of healing. I, if you asked a thousand different people who came here, you'd get a thousand different answers as to why we're here. I'm here because I answered the call. I believe in Veterans Stand. Uh, I got a call from the people in Nashville and said, hey, can you get some folks, the folks that I came, that I tried to get all backed out, but I didn't back out, so I'm here. I drove from Akron, Ohio. Uh, I think I left uh, Saturday and, uh, no, it was Sunday, so here we are. I took an oath uh, to stand, you know, protect the Constitution against all uh, enemies, foreign and domestic. And I think that uh, the DAPL pipeline qualifies as a domestic energy, an enemy in the way that it's gone about this whole system. Um, there was no energy policy. It, you know, it's a high energy, a high pressure pipeline under the Missouri River, different than anything they've done before. And I think it's a danger to a whole lot of people. So I decided to come out here and help these folks out. And I don't know what effect it'll have. And part of the warrior ethic is it doesn't matter. The results don't matter. It's what you do. Detach yourself from the results. It's, it's your own, you know, your own behavior, your own uh, sense of, of ethics, if you will, that... Uh, motivate me and I think everybody here who is in veteran stand I don't you know I don't know that we even expect victory but it doesn't matter. Stefan see you. Do you want to get a